for the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Matthew chapter 18, verses 11 through 14. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 6. Hello, and welcome to Hold Fast Thy Word. We are so glad that you could join us today. We are here to help share the saving gospel of Jesus Christ, whose name is called the Word of God. My name is Stephen. And I'm Nicole. Our prayer is to bring you closer to Jesus Christ by reading God's preserved Word. Today's program is called Lost and Found. Join us as we read three parables given out by the Lord, all found in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15. We will be reading from the Authorized Holy Bible, also called the King James Version, because it is the only trustworthy standard in English that completely preserves the inspired, pure and full Word of God. If you don't have a King James Bible and can't find one in your neighborhood, write to us. We'll be glad to help you out with that. The three parables in today's chapter tell about the love Jesus has for us all. They speak of his total commitment to bringing the lost sinner into a right relationship with God, as well as the Lord's great joy and acceptance of a person who does turn to him for salvation. We will start by reading the first two parables, one about the lost sheep and the other about the lost coin. We want to picture the setting here of chapter 15. Jesus is spending time with the publicans and sinners, and the religious elite, Pharisees and such, are not pleased. They probably think a true Messiah would want to hang out with them. I mean, why not? They are supposed to be the official representatives of God. For those new to the text, a publican was a Jew hired by Romans to collect taxes. Many were dishonest and lined their own pockets with hidden fees and bonuses. They were despised by the people as traitors to begin with, and yet Jesus takes time to be with these people and other sinners who recognize their need for a Savior. They gather around and listen to the Lord, with the Pharisees at the edges complaining. Let's begin. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you? Having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it? 
And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. We can see in the lost sheep parable that we are the sheep, he, Christ Jesus, is the good shepherd. John, in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 and 14 through 18, clearly conveys this idea. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Jesus cares for each of us individually and personally. He sought for us and paid our sin debt with the cleansing power of his shed blood. God looks at the saved sinner and sees the precious blood of Christ and remembers our sin no more because it is removed from our account. Oh, and there is great joy in heaven when a sinner repents and turns to God for life. The Lord is assuring the sinners in the crowd that he loves them and will heal the broken, sin-stained heart that is humble and glad to hear his words. Like the very diligent woman who searches for the lost coin, the coin representing you and I, Jesus calls out, Rejoice with me, because what was lost now has been found. The pressure mounts as the Pharisees listen to Jesus because they are not rejoicing. Actually, they are rather upset by the whole thing. This brings us to the last parable, which is sometimes known as the parable of the prodigal son. Prodigal means recklessly wasteful, which does describe one of the sons. However, there are two sons in this parable, which directly corresponds to the two groups of people in the audience who are listening to Jesus. The wayward, reckless son represents the sinners and publicans who went astray but realized their lost condition and are now sitting at the feet of Jesus. The other son has stayed at home. All that his father has is his too, but he has become bitter, burdened, and self-centered and has no joy in his father's presence. This elder son represents the Pharisees whose pride has hardened their own hearts to the joy of a repenting brother come home. So let's read of the plight of these two sons as we continue in chapter 15 of Luke's Gospel, picking up where we left off in verse 11. And Jesus said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. 
Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. Now. His elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I mightest make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured his living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. That's the end of chapter 15, and we pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to seek and save that which was lost. Soften our hearts and help restore any lost fellowship. You never give up on us, and we thank you for that. We need you, Lord, in our lives each and every moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we do have King James Bibles and audio CDs of our previous programs available free of charge. So contact us at Hold Fast Thy Word, P.O. Box 477, Salt Spring Island, British Columbia, Canada. Postal code V8K2W1. And one more time, that's Hold Fast Thy Word. P.O. Box 477, Salt Spring Island, British Columbia, Canada, V8K2W1. Feel free to write. We look forward to hearing from you. Now it's time to close with some scripture verses from Galatians chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And from 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We'll see you next time, folks. Enjoy your Bible, and God bless. <laughs>